the iStick 40 watt temperature control by eLeaf. So it's small, it's lightweight, it's inexpensive, it's a sturdy design and it delivers temperature control features for under £40. Let's be honest, it will never win a beauty contest, but it's been redesigned and things have been thought of compared to earlier versions. The mode button, designed to switch between temperature control and normal features, is a clever addition. The units received a complete overhaul, so the overlap of standard tanks is now no longer a problem. eLeaf has always been good at making small, compact, easy to use units. They never seem to aim for the best in show sort of mod, but they've always aimed for a budget vapour. And with that, and the comfort and ease of use, it gets the job done. Other than its useful mode button, the iStick 40 watt temperature control comes in four different colours, and they are silver, blue, black and grey. So what about its look? The iStick is a very small and subtle device, so small and minimalistic that it fits in the smallest of hands. Along with its previous versions, still features the chrome upper and lower, with the dark strip containing the screen and the buttons. So what about the feel? Well, there are a few areas that are poorly designed, but I'll touch on that later with the close-up. The fire button does have a slight rattle and does move when you rub your thumb over it, but you need to realise that this is a budget mod, so not everything's going to be perfect. Saying that, when you push the buttons, they do have a nice, solid click. So how does it vape? Honestly, I thought the temperature control features in there were going to be a bag of shit. My main aim for this review was to scrutinise the temperature control feature more than the standard features. I decided to stay away from RDAs and RDA builds as I think this just doesn't provide enough power for a good RDA build. So I turned to my trusty Kangatech Subtank V1 with a Nye 200 coil inside it. And you know what? Surprise! This mod performs really well on temperature control. It does absolutely everything its slightly expensive rivals do. Its settings are easy to set and the vape experience isn't too bad. There is a slight fire delay from pushing the button to actually hearing performance out of the tank. But who cares, it's a budget device. So I went a bit further on actually trying to bench test the accuracy of the temperature feature itself. I generally know that cotton burns at 300 degrees Celsius. So I was trying to keep it as accurate as possible. So basically what I did is I built an, a simple nickel build in an RDA with no juice, no nothing, and just put cotton inside it. And you know what, it's really, really accurate. There's a slight discrepancy of five degrees, but that's nothing really. So I could say overall, the temperature control features work like a charm. So who has this been designed for? Well, the iStick 40 watt temperature control is a really good entry level device that gives you its normal standard wattage mode whilst giving you the option of temperature control vaping. So if you're looking for a simple basic mod with an added temperature control feature, then this really is not a bad idea at all. If you want something that's better than the standard Ego style batteries, then this is also something worth looking at as well. Also to an advanced vapor, if you want something that's discreet, a bit sensible, something that's useful that you haven't got to mess around with every five minutes, then this is one more decent mod to have in your collection. It's a mod crammed with loads of features that are very simple and easy to use. So it ticks a lot of boxes. So what do I like about the iStick 40? Well, to be honest, there's not a lot I don't like. It's cheap, it costs around 35 to 40 pounds. And the fact that it's a temperature control mod it's not a bad deal. The mode button, it, yeah, it's just another button, but it's a useful button. If you compare it to other mods where you have to go through shitloads of menus just to find one fucking little simple feature, it's a pain in the arse. Where with this, all you gotta do is push one button, then I know what I'd rather go for. Its stealth option gives you another great way to save a bit of battery power as well. All it essentially does is turn the screen off when you're vaping. And finally, the most important bit, the 510 connection and the centre pin. The 510 threading is stainless steel and the centre pin is brass and spring loaded. So in terms of its compatibility, it will connect to anything. And with the added extra of an Ego adapter in the box, you can connect everything to this. So with that being said, I just want to go through the specs with you and then take you down for a closer look.
So at first glance, size is the iStick's boast. It features chrome plated uppers and lowers with a flush and straight stainless steel 510 connection with a brass spring loaded center pin. So the important bit is of good quality. Next to the 510 is two slots, which is for a neck strap. So if you want to keep it handy, that's one good thing to use. The main outer casing does feel a bit cheap, but is solid. I want to show you the build quality as well. Some parts are kind of mismatched, especially the two chrome plated uppers and lowers. They don't seem to line up with the actual main body itself. Some edges are quite jagged, which is a bit random. Right, some bits are really bad and then some bits are quite smooth. It's really, really weird. But the screws on the top and the bottom are tight so nothing is loose or moves around. The battery has a decent capacity of 26 milliamps an hour, which is built in and can be recharged via the pass-through USB at the bottom of the device. The screen is found with the four buttons on the edge. The top one is the fire button. You have your plus, your minus, and the mode button. The screen is fairly standard, showing battery levels, resistance, voltage, and the wattage. If you turn it into temperature control mode, where the wattage was it is now replaced by the temperature setting and the wattage is now where the voltage was. To turn the device on, you need to push the fire button five times quickly and the same to turn it off. To lock the wattage or the temperature adjustment, you need to press and hold the plus and minus button for three seconds. When that happens, lock will appear on the screen and you can no longer adjust the settings. To unlock, do the same again for three seconds and unlock will appear on the screen. This allows you to adjust the settings again. Stealth mode is operated by pressing and holding the fire button for three seconds. You know when this is worked when stealth on is on the screen. To turn it off, all you need to do is repeat by pressing the fire and the minus button. This will turn stealth mode off. And finally, the mode button. Pressing and holding the mode button for two seconds will take you to the alternative setting from wattage to temperature mode, from temperature mode to wattage mode. Whilst in temperature control mode, you can adjust the temperature setting by means of the plus and minus buttons. Like most temperature control modes, Fahrenheit and Celsius is on a loop, so when you go to the maximum Fahrenheit, it will then go to Celsius. Going to the maximum Celsius will then go into Fahrenheit, and so on and so forth. This is such a dead easy little mod to use. Absolutely love it. So now I've shown you a quick run through of this little gem. Let's go back to looking at my ugly face, and we'll go through a few pros and cons, and a final summary. So what about the pros? Well, there's fucking loads of them. Where shall I start? It's low price point. For what this thing can do, it's ridiculously cheap. The materials on it are a bit lacking, but you get what you pay for, so no complaints there. Pass through charging system. With the battery being enclosed in this, the only method of charging it is via a USB port at the bottom. If I had any gripe with this, I'd rather move it up here, just because when you plug it in, you can't stand it up. As usual, when you're charging via USB, make sure you read instructions because you don't want this blowing up in your face. So I've said it before and I'll say it again, it's temperature control features. It's £40 and it's got temperature control features. Not only that, they're really good. It's accurate, it's easy to set up. What more could you ask for? All of which can be easily accessed by this button here, which brings me on to my next point. The mode button. Every mod should have one of these fuckers, seriously. It makes switching modes so much more easier and saves time without having to switch through silly menus. It's size and weight. There's no weight to it and it's small. It's stealth display is a little gimmick. I wouldn't use it personally, but if you're up for saving battery power, then that's not a bad addition, I suppose. So what about the cons? Well, the build quality is poor in areas, but apart from that, there's nothing wrong with it. You're getting a fair amount of power with added features for a good price. I could bring up the battery capacity which is only 2600 milliamps an hour, but it's a 40 watt mod, it isn't going to drain it that quickly. 
I could probably get two, two and a half days out of this off a full charge. So really, it's not that bad. So what are my final thoughts? For me, the iStick 40 watt temper control is in no way a bad device at all. And while the pros outweigh the cons, the 40 watt limit can sometimes provide less than desirable results. But that's down to personal preference. For those moving up from Ego style batteries, they will notice a considerable difference in their vaping. As I said earlier, with the inclusion of the Ego adapter in the box, you can still use your disposable Ego tanks if you so wish. But if you're moving up from Ego stuff, I'd expect you to move up to better tanks as well. I'd recommend probably an Aspire Atlantis with this or a Kangatech sub tank. And I recommend them too because they do have Canthol and Ni200 coils available. The iStick may not be for everyone, but if you're struggling to quit smoking, wanting to step up to more advanced gear, then this really isn't a bad thing to consider. Again, it's a budget mod with really good features. What more could you ask for? And for a vapor of five years now, if I had something like this when I first started, my God, my vaping experience would be so much more better. This mod kind of makes me think that this is the next generation for lower end mods. Considering nearly a year ago, you was having to pay at least £140 just for a temperature control feature. And now a year on, it's now in the budget range. It just shows you on how advanced vaping is becoming. With that being said, I hope you found this informative and I thank you for watching. Rate, subscribe and comment in the doobly-doo and I'll see you next time.